How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Vegan Quest. I'm Tim Kay. I really need to speak to Ricky in the wardrobe department. He outfitted me in this apron today. Anyway, today's guest needs no introduction. So I'm not going to introduce her. But she's going to come on here and teach me how to make something called crappy balls. I know what you're thinking, and it's not that. Nope. It's not a couple of soccer balls that have been kicked into the harbor in Baltimore. It's actually a food, and, uh, and I'm going to eat it. So uh, we're going to, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Sanders. Hello. How's it going, Kelly? It's going well. How Welcome are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks Hi, for coming thanks on. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited about your crabby balls that um, I've been dreaming about them. Uh -huh. um, so I've heard that before. What, what exactly is the Krabby Balls. So it is exactly um, basic crab cake recipe that came from my family. Um, and I just substitute some things to make it vegan, um, including artichoke hearts, which I marinate in a top secret crabby seasoning. And um, it becomes like crab. Oh, it sounds exciting. So you are, um, you're a professional cook and you do a lot of work with um, the restaurants around town in York, Pennsylvania? Yes, I do. W what does that kind of work entail? Um, basically just coming up with really good seasonal um, recipes, easy to prepare, um, really tasty, things that people like to eat, and um, how, how, making them vegan. How well do your crabby balls go over? With, they go uh, over very well, yes. Very Is there well. any particular restaurants in town that... Um, we can I, go to pick up, try them. First I time. have served these um, in a different form. I served crabby, crabby cakes. Crabby cakes. Oh, yes, that's similar. at World Grills, which is similar. I did that over the summer, so I will be bringing them back. Um, and I believe I'll be offering the crabby balls as an appetizer. Oh, and that's... possibly at the Holy Hound. Oh, the Holy Hound. Yes. that's a great bar. Yes, my it favorite is. bar in York. The best bar in York. And, and um, <laughs> you know, I, I hail from Baltimore, Maryland, so. It's been a long time, but they have crabs there, and mm -hmm. obviously that's what everybody talks about when they, when they mention Baltimore. Sure. So I'm going to give it the old Baltimore test. All right, perfect. All right, so Can't where do we wait. begin? Okay, so first and foremost, you want to heat up your oil. So get that going to just under burning. What kind of oil? Vegetable? Um, vegetable oil is fine. Um, any kind of deep frying oil you like to use um, is fine. It's really really good. Um, nothing with too much flavor because you don't want to take away from the flavor of sure. the crab. Okay. Oh, what is this? This is the marinated artichoke hearts and I just take a crab seasoning blend, stick them with the artichokes and um, it has salt in it so it's going to draw out some moisture. So you'll see I've already taken moisture out of them and just sitting here some of the moisture will come out. Oh, can I show that to the camera? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Artichoke hearts. I usually marinate those overnight in the fridge just like you would any, you know. Artichokes are a good, um, I'm learning all this as we go along, but artichokes are a good um, substitution for the texture of meat. Yes, right? very good, very good, because the uh, texture is different yeah. from, um, from the base to the tip. So at the base you get kind of like that meaty texture, and at the tip it's more of like the shredded sort of um, texture peels apart. So it was sure. perfect for crab. I tried other things, but this really worked the best. All right, I can't wait. Okay, great. So, second step, I'm gonna come over to the food processor here. This is a little trick that uh, I sort of invented with my family to uh, get the sweetness. Some fresh corn. Some corn, because nothing's more southern than sweet corn. Oh, you're from the south. My Where family's from? from the south. I was born in New York, but um, my mother was born in Savannah. My grandmother was born in Charleston. And I actually just moved back here from Charleston last year. Oh. Yes. And you specialize in uh, southern-style food? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Southern-style vegan food. Yes, southern-style vegan food. I guess you just kind of want to trim the onion here. This is a half an, a yellow onion, and I sort of quarter it. Um, that one's a little small. I did bring an extra one just in case it wasn't enough. It's looking like I might need a little bit more. So you don't have to chop it up too, too small? No, because it's going right in that food processor, and that's going to do all the work for you, really. All right. Um, and then you just kind of want to pulse it, because the last thing you want to do is completely pulverize it and then end up with a um, paste. You don't want that. <laughs> I was going to say a saute, but that would be the wrong word. That would be the wrong word, but that's okay. It's progress, not perfection here, Tim. Okay. 
So then what you do here, pretty simple, just kind of uh, turn it on. Okay. And then in a food processor like this, it's going to A little kinda, bit of a pulse. Yeah. It's going to, you want to get those onions down because they're going to chop up a little slower than the corn. And they're also going to fly out to the sides. Okay. So pretty much like that. Do you play a part, this is a side question, but do you play a part in the Holy Hound alcohol choices? I see they have a huge list of... Um, uh, I play a part in ordering those alcohol choices that you guys drink and we run out of. Are, is it called artisanal <laughs> It's beer? artisanal, yes, artisanal, artisanal beer. Um, artisanal. Yeah, I'm more in the food portion um, of things, but yeah, they do a really great pairing and yeah. stuff like that with And they're really beers. knowledgeable at Holy Hound of vegan beers. I've yes. had a few friends ask about... Yes, they're very Which beers are safe, mm -hmm. and they know, the staff knows. Yes, the staff That's is good. very educated, um, and um, we're, hoping to, we're hoping to open up the menu, too, um, offer different international dishes, um, change it up sort of monthly, and offer vegan options in that as well, which I'll oh, be in charge cool. of doing that. Okay, so we got the corn like this, basically. So over here, can I just put it in this mixing bowl here? Okay, so I might want to put these in first. Um, these are chickpeas, and I just rinsed them and shelled them, which is like peeling the skin off of each one of them. Is it, you have to do that individually for yes, each piece? Yes, individually. Is that tough to do? It's a lot easier than stringing string beans or peeling potatoes, which so I also do pretty though. often. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not as time-consuming as you would think. They just slip right off. So you just yeah. basically pick it up, pop it, pick it up, pop it, pick it up, pop it. It's easy. In cooking, if you want perfection, you must be patient. Yes, right. patience is very important. And so. speaking of Baltimore and um, crabby balls, <laughs> um, yes. not too long ago I was down in the, the Fells Point area mm. and um, oh. some, I, I saw a guy jump into the harbor, which you're not supposed to do. No. And, um, you know, I always thought that there's a lot of crabs in there. What if he hits a, lands on a crab and the crab bites him? Wow. You know, they bite. Yeah, they do. Then he would, I mean, depending on where he was bit. Right. Tim, right. Well, you could end up getting out of there with some crabby balls. Okay, so chickpeas, less time. Okay? Because these are kind of kind of make a, a consistency. See, with uh, crab cake, you'd have egg, which would be a binder, and it would sort of emulsify with your other ingredients and stick it together. What's replacing the egg in this? So in this, we're using the corn, with the, which is the wetness, mm -hmm. and then the chickpeas, which have um, more of the pasty um, consistency, so it's going to stick. And a pulse these. You really want to use the pulse button because it's hard to see in between. So this is, you just kind of want this to look like wet sand almost. Okay? Kind of like that. Wet sand. Okay? It's going to be dry. That's why you take the shells off. Keep it dry. If you leave the shells on, it gets too wet. That's an, an interesting smell to it. Mm -hmm. Almost smells like the Baltimore Harbor. Mm-hmm, right? Swimming with good flavor. Okay. Okay, so basically what I have here is the corn and onion mixture, um, and I added the chickpeas. Yeah. Um, and at this point, what I like to do is season, because we're seasoning. The, this is already marinated, but what we're seasoning is the corn, the onion, and the chickpeas. Okay. And you eat vegetables, you know they take a lot of seasoning. So yep. um, I'm using pink Himalayan salt. Sometimes for this recipe I use sea salt just because they're crabby cakes. Um, looks however, a little bit like rock candy. Yeah, it looks like rock candy. It's uh, not as potent as regular salt, so um, you're going to have to add a little bit more if you do use this. It's much healthier, however. All right. So let me add this in here. And can you use table salt if you're in a pinch? Yeah, or is absolutely. It just not, it's not as... I would recommend using more than a pinch. Yeah. Maybe five pinches, but, um, I meant yeah. if you were in a pinch, like... Oh. The crabs? Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Um, back to this. Also, I add a little bit of this super secret crab seasoning. Is that your own... Yeah, it's recipe? Old Bay plus love. Oh, okay. Okay. So just, you know, kind of coat the top a little bit there. Um, I like smoked paprika also because for me, when I eat bluefin crabs, they have this sort of like smoky, I don't know, flavor to them. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Okay, so that kind of adds crabs? that. Do you smell that? Yeah, bluefin crabs there off the coast of Ooh. South Carolina. Okay, and then I add red pepper because I love spicy. 
Okay. So you you do this so often that you kind of know by memory I how much to know. put. I already know. Now when um when I add the smoked paprika and the red pepper, they're both optional. Um, so it's really by taste. Smoked mm -hmm. paprika can be a little bit more potent. Red pepper is a little bit more potent than black pepper. If you want to add black pepper, I'd say crack black pepper. Do like three or four turns. And one thing that I like about cooking actually is that you can experiment each time you do it to get a little bit of a different spin on Absolutely. your dish. Absolutely. And always taste while you're cooking. It's very important to taste your food while you're cooking because you don't want to get to the very end and be like, oh, I forgot salt. You, you know, a lot of people say that, but what if you're on a diet? Well, if you're cooking vegan food, you don't have to worry about that. Good answer. Okay. So um, I'm just going to kind of stir this in here. Um, with these... They look beautiful as they are, however, we're going to chop them up because we want them to resemble... Are those leeks? These are artichoke hearts. No, I meant in oh, the sink. In the sink. It's got a leak. Oh, yes. <laughs> just... those, that's, that's it. <laughs> okay, so these come either in these quarter pieces or whole. And um, when you're making the crabby balls, these outside edges kind of will get a little too hard, so I peel those off. Um, I don't have too many in this batch because I just kind of wanted to show you these darker outside pieces. And they're a little bit harder to chop through. So if you go through with a rough chop, they won't chop, so you can just kind of pull them out. I've got a lot to learn about artichokes. Yes. I learned a lot just making this dish. I tried several other vegetables. Um, I tried eggplant or aubergine, and also um, zucchini, and yellow squash, and none of that really did the trick. And then I was on a vegan website, and I heard somebody using artichoke hearts to substitute crab in a crab dip. So I was like, oh, well, hey, why not? I've heard of artichoke dip. Yeah, it's like an artichoke dip, but they artichoke did sort of like a, dip? yeah, but they did sort of like a crab dip spin on it. So it's pretty cool. So I kind of just stole that. You have that very idea. good knife technique too. Thank you very much. I chop a lot. The, of I guess things. it helps to have a sharp knife too. It does, and this is a very sharp knife. I brought my sharp knife this time. For those of you watching out there, I've learned that having a dull knife is not a good idea. No. Because that you slip when you cut something, and then you end up cutting your finger. Yep, you do. And I've different done that. if different parts of the knife are unevenly sharpened, it's also very unsafe. Because you'll go head first into one thing and slip off the back of it. That's very bad. I still have a lot to learn about cooking, but this is really great to learn some good knife techniques. Okay, and much like crab meat, which is a technique that you do when you make crab, when we make crab cakes anyway, is I kind of make a little well here in the middle because you don't want to break these pieces apart. You want them to kind of stay together. Oh, yeah, so we're going to be folding this in as opposed to just recklessly stirring it like I do most things. Okay? Can I show the camera? Absolutely. Just gonna rinse this off because we'll need this a little bit later. Okay, so we're back to this. And here again, you're just gonna take the sides and kind of fold it in. Try not to break up your crabby meat. Okay, just wanna get in there. I do this with my hands. Feel free to do it with your hands at home. You wanna get in there? Oh, uh, is that okay? Yeah, go for it. I did wash my hands. Always wash your hands before you touch any food. You don't want cross contamination. Absolutely. Go for it. Yep, just lightly kind of zhuzh it around there. Exactly. Perfect. You know, it's starting to come together. I was, when I saw the raw ingredients, I said, how are you going to make crabby balls out of these? But now that I have the texture in my hands, I can kind of kind of get a feel for get it. Get the gist of it. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> now, in uh, most crab cake recipes, how's it smell? It crabby? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Let me smell. Mmm. That's delicious. Okay, in most crab cake recipes... You might smell gasoline because I, I got gas earlier. I didn't wash my hands. You didn't wash your no, hands? Okay. All right, if you don't mind, I'm going to wash my hands real quick. All right, but only if you do the crab walk to the sink. The crab, the crab walk? Like, yeah, like, you got it. You did it. Okay, now, usually in a crab cake recipe, you would just add... <laughs> you would just... Good? Yes. Got it? Dry? Okay, you would just add the breadcrumbs in and sort of start going with Good, it. Yeah. Um, I, on the other hand, kind of like to keep the outside crispy and the inside very veggie full. You know, somebody gifted me a whole can of Old Bay maybe three or four years ago. 
and I've had no idea what to do with it. I kind of use it on potatoes, but mm. I don't eat crabs anymore. So this is perfect. This what are you going to do? Perfect. What are you going to do? This is what you're going to do. Crabby balls. Okay. So now I am going to go in with my hands because we have okay. to kind of shape these balls. Okay. And so what I do is I kind of take about this much, almost the size of like a hush puppy. Okay. Or a crab ball. And I sort of just like press it together. Right. And then I take these vegan panko breadcrumbs. Be careful with your panko because some of them do have milk fats in them. What is panko? Panko is a Japanese style breadcrumb, which is basically just like a light toasted dry white bread. Can I show the camera? Absolutely. Panko. Seen a lot of Japanese recipes. So I just kind of take the panko, sprinkle it on here, and mash it in. It's sort of a breading. It's sort of a breading and like a breading coating. It is instead a breading, Instead of right? having, yeah, it is a breading. It is exactly what it is. It's bread. So instead of having um, breading all through, I just kind of put it on the outside. Because if you know crab cakes, it's very important to have pieces of crab showing and it not just to be all blended. Right, that's part of the appeal. It's some part people. of the appeal, yes. Okay, so we got one ball down. What is jumbo lump? So jumbo lump crab meat, I believe, comes from the back fin of the crab, in the so underneath where the arms kind of attach to the body. There's arms. There's arms. <laughs> I was thinking of a shark. Did you said? Did you say fin? Yeah, uh, was, they have little no fins. fins. There's, there's fins on the crab. Mhm. Mm Shows you how much I know. I need to go back to anthropology class. Yeah, you do. Not now though. Not right now. Maybe later. Because right now we're doing crab balls. I did study topography. <laughs> okay. So um, you could be crazy and just kind of plop this in here. Or you could kind of like spoon drop it in. You want to spoon drop it in? Okay. So just spoon the balls just like that. Okay. What do you And then spoon you the dip balls? the balls into the hot oil. Uh-huh. And just let them go. Pull your spoon out. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Be good. That really is crackling. Huh? It is crackling. It is crackling. Mm -hmm. So the, the wet ingredients. Do another one? Yep, we're going to do another one. How many one. can you do before they start to combine? So I'm going to do about four in there. Four at a time. Um, now, it's very, very important that you get, when you make these balls, I'm pushing, I'm squeezing them and trying to get a lot of the moisture out. Because when that moisture hits the hot oil and it gets hot inside there, it's going to explode. So you got to make sure you get a lot, as much moisture out as you can. Coat them in this and then get a good dry surface on the outside. We had somebody on the show last week that went to a place called the Roadkill Cafe. Oh. Is that somewhere where you could find crabby balls? Um, in Baltimore. In Baltimore? Um, sure, yeah. You can find anything there if you go on the right road. Okay. And we're going to dip this ball in as well. I'm right. going to try to keep it together there. And you know what? If they bust open inside the oil, it doesn't matter. Kind of try to shape it against the pan pot. And if you can't, then you just eat what comes out. <sighs> Okay, so um, I'm I got three I got two in there now, right? So you're gonna dip this third one and then we're gonna check the first one. The last, the very last thing you want to do is burn your balls. Okay. <laughs> I put a little icy hot on them. Okay. Whoa, that okay. Worked, cooked really fast. We're gonna yeah, it, they're very fast. They cook very fast. See how this one kind of is piecing apart a little bit. Why is that? That's because I didn't get enough moisture out of it, and I didn't seal the outer layer, okay? But again, like I said, it doesn't matter, because look, it's still a crab ball. Yeah. Yeah, so it's never going to completely fail on you. That's why it's a really good go-to recipe, especially when you're trying to entertain or have guests, and it's quick. Well, you know, in life, wait, well, you know, in life, as in cooking, there is no failure. As long as you learn from your failures in life. <laughs> what are we learning from failure? I'm getting grease all over my tuxedo. Are you? Yeah. I feel underdressed. That damn Ricky. It's a good thing I brought some lemon juice. Because <laughs> dressing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's music to my ears right there. Right? Just keeping it healthy. Kind of want to entertain these guys so they don't go off and 
party with someone else. <laughs> right. They might swim with the fishes. They might. They might. It's getting there. So I'd say it might be like a minute and a half to maybe two min under two minutes a ball per ball, <laughs> which I don't know if that well, seems about right to you. That seems about right. Significant timing. timing. Now to garnish this, I just take this pretty simple. This is vegan chipotle mayo, which I put on everything. So it, it pairs really, really well with You can the, buy that in the store? Yeah, buy that in the store. It comes in a jar just like mayo. It's in the um, health food aisle with the other vegan mayos, the other tofu. Okay, so this is a pretty simple garnish. I'm just going to take the top of these off, sort of line them up here. And um, just do your average rings. Or you could go from the side and do like a long, you know, sort of slanted one. But I just like the little rings. It just looks classic. So then I just do some of this in here. A couple of these over the crab balls. Okay. And then lemon. We're going to juice it up. The garnish really differentiates the, the meat so to speak, from the vegetable, which is the garnish. Exactly. You always want to pair something that you cooked with something fresh. Visually, I mean. It's visually, yeah, visually, and it, it appeases the palate because it allows you to get all of those different um, things happen at the same time. Yeah. Well, Should I try one? Try one, please. All right, I'm going to try one. Oh, that one's really hot. Yeah, Actually, I'll, oh, I'll yeah, start so with this one. This one wait. has been a while. Yeah. So I just dip this in. Mm -hmm. Careful, it's a little bit hot. Oh, I can hear that crunch in your mouth. Wow. This is better than anything I've ever tasted in a restaurant before. Thank you, Tim. Mm. I appreciate that. Well, I want to go swimming in the sea now. Yeah. Does it make you feel like going swimming? It's great. Because, you know, it brings a little bit of summer to any holiday function. And a lot of people eat seafood for New Year's. So this is a good way to do it vegan style. And you can just bring, put your balls in a bag and bring them with you. <laughs> a sack. <laughs> I, love, I love the crabby balls. All right, guys, thank you so much. This is Kelly Sanders, everybody. Um, where can people find you online? Or if they want to get, bring you into the restaurant, maybe? Sure, you can find me on Facebook at Kelly Sanders. Or you can find me on Instagram at pro underscore seeding, spelled like seeds. Okay. And um, we want to thank everybody out there. Um, we've been getting a lot of comments and things. We want to encourage you guys to watch the videos and share the videos with all your friends. And um, in a couple of the comments, people have... Noted that um, I sometimes I sing on the show. I, I don't always do it, but sometimes it, it strikes me. And you know what? This is my show. I do what I want. So I'm going to sing a song for you, Kelly. Awesome. You ready? I can't wait. On the twelfth day of vegan, my true love gave to me two turtle doves, three French hens, two turtle doves. And some crabby balls in a tree. <laughs> this is a poinsettia. Oh. But that's okay.